right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily content, and let's get right into it. I already know what y'all thinking, Jay. Hey, Jay, Jay. This ain't your normal content, bro. What's going on? Listen, bro, y'all know that I'm an avid Georgia fan. Y'all known that for years. Atlanta Falcons, Georgia Bulldogs, Atlanta Hawks, everything Atlanta. I'm from Georgia. This is where I've been born and raised my whole life, man. So y'all know that when stuff like this happens, I got to get in on it. Plus, I need these views, man. It's the first day of the, it's the, first of the month. Wake up, wake up. Wait, it's the first of the month, man. You know, we got to get this thing popping and get off on the right foot, bro. But let me tell y'all something, bro. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I am now suffering and recovering from severe PCS. And you're going to say to yourself, Jay, hey, Jay, Jay, what's PCS? Puckered cheek syndrome. That's what I've been going through for the last four or five hours with these Bulldogs, bro. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. This is my really raw, not even thought out reaction to them winning the game. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, bro. Like, we, we let's start at the, at the end of the game first. We are at my friend's house. Everybody's there. My wife's birthday today, all that good stuff. So, you know, she, she was the first baby or whatever. Look, they're getting ready to kick the field goal. They turned the television. Every man in the house lost his mind. Like, what in the world just happened? These guys. It's eight seconds left, 42 to 41, Georgia, and and they turn the television to uh to rocking New Year's Eve with Ryan Seacrest. So imagine you see these guys lining up for everything, eight seconds left, and then you see Ryan Seacrest on the TV. They count it down from 60 seconds. Now, y'all already know what 60 seconds is in the football world. This By the time they come back, this ball going to be kicked, the game going to be over, and all that good stuff. I get on my phone. I got ESPN on my phone. I am looking 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 for espn on my phone and uh the wi-fi was so terrible over there uh because it just goes in and out sometimes because it's just because of the area or whatever the wi-fi was bad i couldn't even i couldn't even get espn to pull up because sometimes it'll just disconnect you or what have you i don't know why i need to fix that i'm a network engineer i need to go over there and fix that and help them out anyway by the time we come back all I see is three seconds left on the clock. I see Stetson Bennett, Bennett crying, and I'm like, yo, what's going on? So then I look at the score, three seconds left. I was like, he missed it. So everybody started running around the house, you know, doing all that good stuff. Listen to me, man. I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. I feel like, um, I hope this was an eye opener for, for the Bulldogs, man, because I feel like we got our butt whooped up and down the field. Uh, even though Georgia came out and they they ended up being the better team tonight or what have you i'm gonna be real ohio state outplayed out executed and just flat out seemed like they wanted it more than georgia now georgia almost seemed like a team that was like yo we got this and we can turn it on at any time and we can probably get this thing done or what have you but i ain't gonna lie to you i was scared the entire game from the beginning to the end and i'm gonna be honest with y'all man three key plays in the game and y'all already know, I'm not going to talk about the field goals or anything like that because Georgia missed two field goals. They missed one. I feel like it shouldn't even come down to that. Georgia hit both of their field goals. We're not even in the situation. Conversely, if Ohio State hits that, hits that field goal, then the game is over. So we're not even going to talk about the field goals. I'm going to tell y'all the two, the three key plays that I feel like were the biggest thing. Obviously, the 76-yard touchdown from, uh, you know, where where the, uh, the DB fell down, Ohio State's DB fell down. And he was he, he was talking, he was talking the whole game too. But he hit him with an inside out crossover. And I mean, he just he just fell down. Smith to the house, 76 yards. Stetson Bennett puts it out there. All he got to do is catch the ball and get into the end zone. That was that was one of the biggest plays. The second biggest play was the un incredible, incredible first down where uh you know they had called it they they had called it uh what well, they called him short. And then, uh, and then you know they went back and looked, and uh, Brock, Brock, what is that? Brock Brooks, number nineteen. Yeah, Brock Bowers. I'm sorry, bro. I'm bugging. Uh, Brock Bowers. He catches the ball, and then he goes and, and he gets the first down. Boom. That was an incredible first down. I don't even know how he held himself off the ground and was able to extend that thing, but he did it. But last but not least, man, the biggest player of the game, and I'm going to be completely honest with y'all, a lot of people probably not going to agree with it. Or probably, a, lot of probably, a lot of people probably going to say, you right on the nose, I'm an Ohio State fan, and I'm just waiting on somebody to say this. Bro, 
when they knock when they knock Lil Harrison out the game, that was that was clearly the biggest play of the game. I think that when he got knocked out, it was one of those things where that, well, that's unfortunate. You know, like as a as a Georgia fan, I was like, well, that's unfortunate. But we had no answer for him at all. It's like zero over zero. It's undefined. We got no answer. I got no answer for you. When, you, when your parents catch you doing something, you ain't got no. I ain't got no answers for you. We Georgia literally had no answer at all for Marvin Harrison Jr. If he would have stayed in the game, game set match, it was over with. It's a wrap. But as soon as he got knocked out, I was like, wow. Well, that's unfortunate. But at least we got a chance now. I mean, we are we down. We you know what I'm saying we it's gonna be a it's gonna be a heck of a fight back. But at least we got a chance now. But once he went out of the game, I was like, okay, you know we can do something now. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with y'all. C.J. Stroud showed why why he's one of the top prospects, NFL prospects next year, and was a Heisman finalist. And I ain't gonna lie, there were times where I was like Stetson Bennett, you're looking he he was looking like a walk on. But by the end of the game, he showed why he, he in my opinion. He showed why he was a Heisman finalist, and 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 why why he I don't know if they if they even looking at him as a top prospect or whatever in the NFL. I don't know if they say you know he's too old. You know, it's not gonna translate. Whatever, whatever. But I mean, C.J. Stroud was clearly the better player tonight. Uh, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the stuff that C.J. did, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's, it, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It felt like Georgia was the better team all night, but again, Ohio State out coached, out schemed. Out, out, everything. It's just like what we say in Madden scheme over team. They, it's like Ohio State took that to heart because what they were doing, the schemes and the plays that they were running, bro, it was just, it was too perfection. It was, it was almost like for the first couple of quarters, first three and a half quarters, they knew exactly what Georgia was drawing up and they had the perfect counter. Really, all the way up into the last drive, it felt like they had the perfect counter. Like, the, they just coached their butt off, and those guys executed. And it's just unfortunate that anybody had to lose this game. But because Ohio State definitely deserved to win it as much as, as anybody else. Just like, like, and when I'm saying scheme over team or what have you, it, it, this, this is how I felt. And y'all be honest with me. If you're Ohio State fan, you let me know if you feel the same way. Georgia fans, I know y'all feel the same way. Everybody in America knows that Ohio State could not line up and go straight at Georgia. Everybody in America knows that. In a straight up slug fest, that's not happening. It's not gonna work out well. It just wouldn't have, eventually Georgia got, got Ohio State into a position where they had to do that, or where Georgia just said, you know, we just gonna come straight at you and we gonna punch you in the mouth and see what happens. But everybody in the country knows that Ohio State was not gonna be able to just stand in there in a slug fest. So what did they do? They, it, it seems like there was a lot of, a lot of motion, misdirection, and just, just plays where they just kept catching Georgia off guard, off guard, off guard. Just kept them off balance, and and rightfully so. If you know that you can't go straight at somebody, we know we can't go straight at you. So what are we gonna do? We're just gonna, we we gonna go. We'll look at the holes in your defense, and we're gonna do. We're gonna scheme you to absolute death. And that's what happened. That's what it appeared to happen. And like I said, CJ Stroud was throwing to dudes. I mean, dudes was blasted ass open. It was incredible how wide open Marvin Harrison Jr. was getting. It was just like nobody was on him. I thought we were gonna have to call DSGB and Pastor Troy to come out there and get this. It, it didn't matter. It was no, bro, four catches, 100, what he had, 106 yards with four catches and two touchdowns? It was clear we had n nothing for this dude, bro. And so, like I said, like, like, but once he went out of the game, they still were able to just continue to run plays that kept catching Georgia off guard, kept making, kept CJ Stroud in, in spots where he could throw to his dudes. I mean, they couldn't have been more wide open. 340, I think he had 348 yards. Bro, I don't think he had to throw. The only pass that I think was really in a really tight window was the was the one um was the one that, that Harrison caught for the touchdown. The one that he caught uh, when he stepped out of bounds and you know he got knocked out of the game or what have you. I thought that was a good call too. I don't think there was a targeted. I don't think it's a head to head or anything like that. I just felt like, dang, if we can't do that, we're not playing football anymore. If you can't do something like that and he actually led with his shoulder and tried to hit with his shoulder or what have you, I felt like if you can't do that, there's no way that you can play football and, and we might as well be seven on seven and only the line is live and the running backs are live can be tackled or what have you. But you know, um, I don't know, man. Like it, like I said, it's just unfortunate. Like I said, Georgia missed two field goals from, from a similar spot. 
And if they don't miss those, not even in that situation, it's just unfortunate that anybody had to lose that game, man. I, um, like I said, once again, hell of a game, hell of a game. Um, but I just, I just got that feeling. Like I said, it's like Georgia was the better team. Ohio State knew Georgia was the better team, but doggone it, bro. Ohio State was better to tonight. It seems like Ohio State was better coached. They were better. They 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 better scheme, better execution, and they just wanted it more. Like I said, it's just unfortunate that they had to lose that game. And I'm not even like I said, I'm a Georgia fan through and through. I'm glad they I'm glad they won the game. Glad Georgia defense kept them in the game. But at, some, at one point, I can't even really say that because at one point it seemed like the defense couldn't stop anything. It looked like a sieve, and then. Then the offense couldn't get anything going, and it's just like they just fought and clawed and and got back into the game. And like I said, one thing about C.J. Stroud was it was just so frustrating because at the end, the last the last drive, Georgia finally started executing. And what I'm saying, they finally started executing. It was like like they blit they blitzing C.J. Stroud, but the problem is they were they kept just letting him break contain. And it's like you can't break contain. You got it with a guy like that. You have to stay in your lane. They're getting the push up the middle, and then you break. You letting them break contain, or you coming. You're, you're trying to tackle him instead of just boxing him in. He's gonna get away from you every time. Made two magnificent plays at the end of the. Uh, you know, on that on that would be game winning drive where they missed the uh, field goal, bro. I, I really thought it was over with. And then then the last play after that, after he makes the makes the run, uh, you know they stop him three times uh third down you know they go for it because they didn't feel comfortable with, with, with where they were kicking the field goal and what happens they actually play and get some good contain on him make him throw the ball away they don't get another yard if they get any more yards maybe they, they maybe the uh the kicker is more confident and they win that game man but uh like i said bro one that was, that was a heck of a game one of the best games i've seen in a while um i really feel like whoever wins that game probably wins the national championship but you can't count tcu out man they played tough against uh they played tough against um against uh michigan i really feel like ohio state should have been number two and then and 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 i, I don't i don't know i don't know that either i don't know that either tcu or michigan could have beat ohio state i don't think they could have beat them i think the only team that could beat ohio state tonight was ohio state but Georgia was awarded the win, man. Like I said, I got to give the dogs a whole lot of credit, but at the same time, I got to give Ohio State their credit too, man. Like I said, they 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 were they just flat out they they played great, uh, great coaching, great schemes. The plays that they were running is just just completely kept Georgia off balance. Like I said, you know they couldn't go head to head in the slug fest, so uh, they just ran plays that kept them off balance. And again, if Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get knocked out of the game, it's I don't. I don't even think it's completely different. It is completely different. I don't think that you hadn't stopped them to that point. So I don't know. You know what happens. But again, Georgia held it down, came through with the dub, um, and and Stetson Bennett lives to fight another day, man. Like I said, he at, at one point I'm like he looking like a walk on, and he's a walk on for a reason, and and maybe they're putting too much on him, and that's what it really looked like. It really looked like the lights was too heavy for. I mean, it was too bright for him. And, and C.J. Stroud was just comfortable in the limelight. And then, little by little by little, it looked like it looked more and more like, like, man, I don't want to go out here and do this again because y'all hanging this on us. And, you know, defense got to stop some sooner or later. And, you know, Stetson Bennett at the end, by the end of the game, he shows you why, yeah, I definitely deserve to be up there as a Heisman finalist too, man. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section, man. Like I said, it was just a good game. Ain't got to be no bad blood on either side. And it's no trash talking. It's just one of those where it was the, the clock just ran out, and it's unfortunate that uh, for Ohio State that they came out on the on the losing end of that. But man, hell of a game, hell of a game. Anyway, um, got nothing bad to say about anybody, man. I mean, it was just a great game, very entertaining. Uh, y'all, let me know what y'all think down in, in the uh, sec in the comment section, man. And I don't want to hear anything about you know about about well you know they should have called that and that should have been uh, a targeting foul or whatever whatever i thought it was too until they replayed it but at the same time man there's a lot of missed calls a lot of misholding calls a lot of missed pass interference calls i mean you know the, the officiating wasn't the greatest tonight but they let them play 
And we and you know, we came out with a great game. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section, man. I'm hot to tell next time. Till next time. <laughs> it's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Chap. Guys, please. Guys, please.